Hey guys, it's Amber from NotableInc.com and I'm back with another project from a digital image from Sophia J. Caldwell. So this is her rose image and this is actually an arrangement that is shaped like a heart but I've enlarged it so that I could create a full background panel with this. Um, I had insomnia not too long ago and was binge watching some Giannis Makula videos and so I decided to color a dark background on this panel. So. I have Sophia's image printed on Nina Classic Cross Solar White. This is 80 pound. And I have a Copic R85 marker just filling in this background. I'm of course not gonna show you all of the coloring here, but I do end up doing two layers just to get you know, solid coverage here. I'm gonna move on to the leaves using YG03, YG63, and YG67. And I'm just starting with my darkest first and adding some shadows both at the creases in the leaves and then also up that center crease of the leaf. And then I'll fill everything in the, with the YG03. The YG03 lighten things up so I'm going to go back in with my darkest markers and build up those shadows again. I like to see really high contrast between my highlights and my shadows. So I'll just keep building it up uh, until I'm happy with it so that I get a dimensional look to that leaf. After I'm done with this leaf off camera, I'll do the rest of the leaves and then we will move on to the roses. So I decided to use yellows for my roses and you can see the colors are listed up above, YR24, Y26, Y13, Y28, and E19. And I wanted a golden yellow rose. So again, same thing, I'm starting with my shadow. So same formula as I always use for any type of flower. What I do is I put shadows at the base of the petals, anywhere where the petals overlap each other, that's gonna cast a shadow. And then also in some of the wrinkles at the tips of the, of the petals. So Sophia has added so much beautiful detail to these images. It makes it really easy to color. You can just follow her guidelines for where the shadows would be, where that detail is. For this Y13, I literally, I didn't even go with the pattern of, once I got to the center of the flower, I didn't even go with the pattern of it. I just swiped that yellow all over the bloom. And then you can see I'm coming in with some darker shades here. Y28 is a golden color. It's kind of a desaturated yellow, almost like a gray yellow. And I like that for some added depth, but it's not quite dark enough for me. So that's why I come in, you'll see kind of after I'm done with the flower, I'll come in with E19 to really darken up those shadows. And I don't know, I honestly just grabbed a color that was dark. It's a little strange that I picked E19 because it's more of an orange, um, kind of like a reddish orange and it's so different than the background. So, but it worked, it ended up working in the end. I just kind of grabbed a color and went with it. So I'm just using a flicking motion. So when I get into the smaller, tighter areas, you'll see me hold my marker upright so that just the tip is touching the paper. Otherwise, if I'm doing broader areas, I'll use my marker at more of an angle so that I get a broader area of the tip of the brush nib on the paper. So here's the E19. I'm just gonna come in and darken up those shadows and then I'll soften that out with some of my mid-tones. Sometimes though, I'll just leave the darkest shadow at full strength and not even blend it out just, to, just so that it leaves quite a bit of depth. I am gonna add a little bit of this to the tips of the petals though and I do wanna blend that out a little bit. So you can see, because I'm trying to get smaller lines, I'm up on my tip. And then if I want a broader stroke or a smoother blend, I'll hold my marker at more of an angle so more of the brush nib is contacting the surface of the paper. So I'm just adding more depth here so you can see my mid-tones. I'm bringing those mid-tones out a little bit further. And then I'm coming in and kind of softening up some of those highlight areas with the Y13. These panels sat around for a couple of weeks before I finally put a sentiment on them because I just didn't want to cover them up. I thought they were so pretty. So what I use for the sentiment is dyes. I didn't obviously didn't want to stamp, so I used dyes with a shadow so that I could pull the sentiment away from the busy background. And I used that R85 marker to create the thing so that it would be a coordinating color. 
This time I'm going to use the BG70 family for the leaves and I'm coloring on Royal Sundance Sunflower cardstock. This cardstock has a rustic feel to it. You can see flecks of brown fibers in it and it's more loosely woven than your Nina Classic Crest. So your markers are going to respond differently to a paper like this. So it's fun to try out something different. The yellow tone of the paper is also going to change the color of your marker, so you have to take that into account as well. So what I would suggest is that you have a scrap of the colored cardstock that you're going to use and then test your marker colors so that you know how it's going to turn out before you start coloring on your final piece. Here I have R14, and I didn't take my own advice here, I have R14. Once I started coloring, I was like, mm, no, I don't really like this color at all. I went ahead and completed the panel though because I had already started it and then I covered it up with R29 to create a richer red. And this time I'm going to go darker with the roses with E79 YR24, E23 YR23, and Y32. So this is going to have a really rich feel to it and because the paper is yellow, you wouldn't even need to cover all of the paper. You could leave some of the areas, the bare cardstock for your highlight areas. I do end up doing at least one coat over everything, um, but you have that as an option as well. Just like with your white cardstock, it's the same thing. If you wanted to have really bright highlights, you would just leave the white paper, a little bit of the white paper there. So you can already see that this flower is going to be much darker than our other one. And I find that the colored cardstock dulls down the colors a little bit and is going to give it a little more of an antique feel. Um, I don't have adding the sentiments on film, so I'll go ahead and chat about that while I'm coloring. So for this card, I used the Hello and Hugs die set from Alta New. That also has a shadow on it. So what I did with this one is I cut the shadow in black and then the actual sentiment in the same yellow cardstock. And then I used my yellow markers to add a gradient effect to that die cut, which I thought looked really nice with this panel. So you can see the finished card here and that gradient sentiment. And I love these roses and how rich the yellow paper has made this panel. It's really striking, I think. So we're gonna do a really simple card for our third colorway. And I just wanted to show you the difference between how the markers absorb into the paper from one to the other. I, I don't know if that's because of the weave of the paper or, or if maybe I felt like I needed more marker on the white paper or what causes that. But you can see that I've printed the same pattern on a piece of vellum. And what I'm going to do is just adhere this with some Ranger Multimedia Matte Glue. And I have a fine tip applicator on here. I'm going to adhere that to an A2 size piece of Star Dream metallic coral paper. This is a super light coral and it has such a pretty sheen to it. The metallic part of it isn't overwhelming. It's really subtle. I think this was, would be a beautiful card for, let's say, an invitation or I don't know, it's just so pretty. Um, I end up adding a hugs die to this. So from that same Alta New set, I cut the shadow in black and then I cut the hugs out of the same coral cardstock and I think it just has a really elegant look. So I basically just added a dabs of the multimedia matte into the darkest areas and there's not a lot of glue on this panel but you can see that it sticks down beautifully and it stayed flat. And you couldn't see the adhesive when just looking at it in person. So we have the three panels here. Here's the finished card. And the photograph doesn't show how pretty this color is, but it's just a gorgeous light coral color. I hope you guys enjoyed these projects today that were inspired by Yanis Makula. And I'll have a link to one of the videos that I saw. This is something that she does quite frequently is color the background dark. I had a blast with these and I think this image from Sophia is gorgeous. If you haven't already subscribed, what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button, the like button, and ring the bell to be notified of more inspiration. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you real soon.